My name is Anthony Vizzari and I am the owner of a and Studios and 312 Photo Booth. We manufacture photo booths and sell vintage cameras. It's four. I was working as an architect and as a full-time uh, job and it this was a hobby. You know, I've always been collecting cameras. Um, one day we purchased a photo booth. We were going to have one um, for a wedding, but that never panned out. But the idea had stuck that we wanted to buy a photo booth. And so I bought my first machine. Then there was a second and a third. Before I knew it, I was buying entire um, storage facilities worth. And a business evolved. And I stopped being an architect and uh, started this business full time. Just by default, I have tons of photos of myself. and. It's kind of creepy. It's kind of uh, interesting at the same time. You know, you could see weight changes. It's weird. I've got a whole box of them. As part of the pose, I'm actually trying to test um, the photo booth. I want to make sure that the camera has, or that the system is actually producing four flashes. And the best way to do that is I kind of block out one. Sometimes I'm two. Sometimes I'm three. And also sometimes four to look at the bottom light. And those change too. It just depends. I don't, I don't really do funny very well. Um, serious business in the photo booth. People go nuts when there's a photo booth because there's, there's an intimate experience that happens inside. It's the act of uh, pulling the curtain, spinning the stool, sitting down. Once a machine settles in after it's initially been shipped somewhere, um, let's say it goes to a pub, once you work out all the kinks and you realign all the parts, um, it's like a Rube Goldberg contraption, lots of moving parts and relays. Once you get that all settled, it's a pretty straightforward process. I like pictures. I like freezing things in time. I like the mechanics of cameras. Um, I like the metal. I like the design. But I also like the process of, of how things, how that works. And I like working with the medium, you know, for my own personal work as well. Being a collector of cameras, you know, we always wanted to do something that was retail just because it's fun. It's not like we don't make our, our fortune off of selling, you know, used and vintage cameras. But uh, with, the, with the storefront, it said it was just a natural, a natural progression into retail because I already collect these cameras. I've got hundreds and hundreds of cameras. I mean, what do you, at some point, maybe it's time to uh, move them along to, to somebody else. And um, often I have, you know, five of one camera anyhow. So might as well sell them and uh, the business just evolved that way. I have a lot of favorite cameras. Um, they all each have their own um, you know, attributes that I find exciting. But I like, um, specifically, I like cheap plastic cameras. Um, one exposure, uh, medium format. I definitely like medium format. But I, I do like, I like the simplicity and the design of some of the these uh, just one-off sort of amateur snapshot cameras. I mean, they were really made for mass market, but they're, they've been these beautiful, beautiful objects. And so I appreciate cameras for their aesthetics, but I can also appreciate them for their function. So there's different classes of camera, I guess, that I have. I mean, there's cameras that I have that I really like because I use, I use them, or some I just have that I could use them, but truthfully, I really just like the way they look. So this is a Noble X. Um, it's a panoramic camera, but it's it's medium format film, so it produces a very nice large negative. The 35 millimeter version of this is a Russian camera, which I absolutely love. It's the Horizon. You can see the, you can check the lens. You have to keep your fingers out of the plane, but you can see the lens travels, obviously, you know, 180 degrees. We like to have cameras that work, we, whether it's 35 millimeter instant or medium format. We like to be able to shoot with this stuff, and um, it's nice to have a camera on the shelf sometimes, but people who come to us want want the film, they want to shoot, and they want to try different things. And so even though digital is like taken off in the world, um, and it's obviously, you know, digital is here to stay, and we love digital, There's nothing wrong with it. Um, just analog is a different way of shooting, and a lot of people are getting back into it. And instant is an easy way for a lot of our customers to come back into, uh, into photography, let's say from digital, or if they have no experience in analog photography. It's instant, they don't have to think too much about, you know, apertures and shutter speeds and, you know, formats and getting in the dark room. They can just pop in a cassette, shoot. They've got, you know, they're working with analog and, and they're slowing down. So they're slowing down, you know, because you, you get eight shots, it's expensive film. Um, it's not like digital where you can take a hundred, you know, hundred photographs at once. So it changes the way you shoot. I, I quite enjoy digital. Truth is, I probably use my iPhone uh, a camera, which I love, 
um, more than any other digital camera. And I think for if it's not a, a professional endeavor or something where I need to get you know, the cleanest shots in the lowest light conditions, my iPhone is perfect. And I think it actually is it's better suited than any other camera, digital camera I have at least. I probably even use it more than analog. I collect vintage photography or vernacular photography as they may call it, basically snapshots, other people's pictures. Um, I've been collecting these for, you know, since I was a teenager and, you know, when buy other people's pictures, it's just that. I go to flea markets, estate sales, um, junk shops, and I buy negatives and photos that were other people's images at one time. One very large uh, subcategory uh, of my collection of photographs is memorial related photography also known as mourning or post-mortem photography. It wasn't unusual for people to take a photograph of the deceased, prop them in a chair, let's say, um, or, and then everyone gathers around and takes one last family portrait. Now you have to understand that um, early on, let's say early 1900s, late 1800s, even into the 1930s, 40s maybe, you know, photography was still relatively expensive, uh, especially in the early years of photography. Some people may have never had their portrait taken. They may have never had a family portrait taken. So this may have been the only opportunity it's, uh, for the family to get together and have a portrait with this person. Now, obviously, they, they waited for the wrong time. They should have done it a little earlier. Um, but this is what they chose to do. And um, that's their last photo. And I think sometimes it's more, to, it's not just, a, it's, it's not this macabre thing. It's, it is really about respecting this individual and saying it's, it's a final send off and photography plays a, a role in that. Rather than burying and, and forgetting it, you're making the, the choice to, to record it somehow and keep it somehow in, in more than just in your memory as a physical artifact, as a physical actual document. When you have a disease that is, impacts your life, you, you're, you start to think about things like, well, you know, it actually, it's strange. In a strange way, it hasn't made me and you may not, I mean, it hasn't made me, it's, it's made things, I guess, I, how do I explain it? Instead of like pulling back and say, I should really concentrate on, you know, just one thing, I've actually expanded things. It's like, you know, you, you, it gives you the, the ability to say, fuck it, basically. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do whatever I want. It's actually, it's actually liberating. Having, having cancer is actually liberating in some strange sense. So, you know, I'm not gonna die tomorrow. I think I'm gonna be around for quite some time. I know I'm going to be around for quite some time uh, because that's what I'm going to do, but that helps solidify for me a lot of the decisions that I, I make now. I enjoy collecting things, but at some point, you know, what, what good is the collection if it just gets, if it just sits around? I mean, that's lame. You know, you want to have, it's nice to have other people get pleasure from it. Um, otherwise, you're just some, otherwise you do become a hoarder. What's the difference between a hoarder? and a, uh, a collector. What's the difference between, um, well, so one person told me it's, it's archiving. I don't know if I believe that. Um, I think it's organization and not having cat feces. But um, <laughs> uh, if, you have, if you have lots of stuff and lots of animals, then you have a problem. Um, but a lot of cameras, that's okay, that's okay.